welcome back you guys to sewing 101 with me annie it is video number two in the series of sewing 101 with me i am super excited about this particular video because this is how i started my journey and i'm excited to show you and share with you um the basic hand sewing stitches that i know and that i have used a lot i am no expert there are so many other methods but i just wanted to share with you five different stitches five different stitches that i learned so buckle up and prepare to learn some hand sewing from me okay let's get right into it i'm going to be using these navy blue scraps that i had we are also going to be using some snipping scissors we're also going to be using some hand needles. I use my little Dritz packet and I'm going to pick out a longer one for today. You will also need some thread. I'm going to be using white so you can see the contrast between the navy blue fabric and the thread. Okay, the moment has come. Let's learn how to thread your needle. Make sure you have enough thread to start with. But don't get too crazy. Having a long string of thread can make it a bit more complicated. So I would suggest to first start about with 30 inches of thread. Then you can go cray cray if your heart desires. Get your sewing needle and put the thread through the tiny, teeny, tiny hole. Once you've put it through the little hole, make sure that both threads at the end match up. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I end my thread with a knot. There are many other ways that you can do it, but this is how I learned and it has helped me. What I do to tie a knot at the end of my strings is wrap the thread around my finger two times. And if you don't like needles very close to you, then this is not the option for you, but this is how I do it. I use the gap between my nail, the end of my nail and my skin to put the needle through there. So there's like a little pocket that I put the needle through. And then I just pull it all the way through and make my knot. Make sure you cut off the excess thread and have this ready to go. The first stitch that we're going to be learning is the running stitch. You will need your needle, obviously, threaded, some fabric, some chalk, and some scissors. Now, I want to talk to you about fabric for just a second. Most fabrics have a face and a back. So I'm going to be drawing an X through the side of the fabric that is the face. And the back will be just the plain navy blue fabric. When you sew, you want to make sure that both faces are touching and sew on the edge of the fabric. That way, when you open it up, you will have a perfect seam with both of the faces showing and the seam will be tucked right in. While you're learning to stitch, I suggest that you mark your fabric with a few practice lines like so. You can use a ruler and a water soluble pen or a chalk that I have here and just draw your line so that you make sure that your stitches are in one perfect line. Once you have your practice line, you are ready to start your first stitch. To start, bring your needle up through the back of the fabric to the front. Make sure your knot is sturdy and then proceed to take the needle down from front to back a stitch length from the first point to complete a single stitch just like this now bring the needle up again from the back to the front leaving some space length from the end of the previous stitch now that you're a pro continue stitching in the same manner making sure you are spacing the stitches and keeping your lovely stitches uniform in size and the best that you can until you have completed the end of your line you did it now to end this lovely stitch you have created make a final stitch then make the knot this is how i make my knot pick up a bit of fabric at the end and bring it to a loop now before you tie this loop up you're gonna want to put your needle through that loop and pull so that you make a knot now i like to do this two times at the end to make sure that the knot is sturdy and that my stitch has a nice finish. Once you are done, you can take your snipping scissors and cut the excess threads off. And you're done. You have now finished your first stitch. Now onto our second stitch, our back stitch. 
This stitch is a more tougher stitch, meaning a stronger hold than the previous stitch. I like using this one a lot when I hand sew just to make sure that my projects are sturdy and not fall apart. To start, we're going to draw a line on the fabric again just to make sure that our stitches are straight. Grab your thread and needle and we're going to begin the stitch the same way that we started the last one. You create a back stitch by bringing the needle up a stitch length away from the end of the previous stitch and then taking it down at the end near existing stitch, just like this. The difference between this stitch and the last one is the space between the stitches. This one goes through the entire row as opposed to the first one, which is a stitch, a space, a stitch, a space. Now keep repeating this process until you get to the end of your line. And I'm sorry that my camera focuses so bad. Um, I hope that you can see what I am doing and how I am doing it. Now, I ran out of thread before finishing the line, so this is perfect for me to show you what to do if this happens to you. Make sure you have enough thread to make that loop and that ending knot. Now I'm going to do what I did previously to end my stitch with a knot. Now you can just thread your needle again and start the process like you did at the beginning. So start with your knot at the back and then proceed to do the same thing that you have been doing. Now once you get to the end, you are going to pick up that fabric and make that little loop and tie that knot up. And like I said before, I do it twice. Once you are done, just snip that thread and you are done with your back stitch. Now you've done two stitches. Moving on to our third one. Our third stitch is called the whip stitch. Now for this stitch, you're gonna wanna draw a line a little bit closer to the edge, about 1 8 of an inch. You're just gonna wanna make this line as close as you can to the edge. Now that you have your line, you know the drill. Thread your needle and let's start this stitch. Now for this one, you're going to begin by poking your needle up through the top layer of the fabric, about 1 8 of an inch where you drew your line. This way, the knot will be hidden between the two pieces of fabric and it will not be visible. Poke the needle up through both layers of fabric so the needle and the thread come up in almost the same place as the first poke. The thread should be wrapped around the edge of the fabric in one neat stitch. Make sure to pull this stitch so that they are snug but not too tight. Now that you got it down, continue the same process until you get to the end. Once you have completed your entire row of stitches, you're going to want to end with your lovely knot by doing the same process, picking up a bit of fabric, making the loop and tying it through two times. And there you have your third stitch. Now just snip those edges of thread and you are done. You have now completed three different stitches. Now, let's move on to our fourth stitch, the invisible stitch. I hope you are still with me because these last two are my all-time favorite hand stitches. Once again, you know the drill. Prep your thread and needle to get started. Now, to make this invisible stitch, you are going to want to make sure your fabric is folded and ironed together like so. By doing this, it just makes the whole process a lot easier. This is also used for pillows when you want to finish any type of pillow casing and you don't want to see the stitches. The invisible stitch is the way to go. Now, we're going to start by pinning our two pieces of fabric to make it easier to stitch. Once you have those pinned, you are ready to go. You're gonna wanna start this stitch by bringing the needle up through one of the ironed edges like we did with the other one so that the knot is hidden. Once you have hidden your knot, go to the opposite side and slide the needle through the top of the fold so you pick up just a little bit of fabric. Now go directly across to the other side and do the same thing. 
Repeat this a couple more times to get these straight lines. The trick is to go from one side to the other, straightening it and making it perpendicular to the folds. Once you have a few, here is the fun part. You just pull the thread a little bit and bam, it's gone, disappeared. Now you can see it because it's white, but if you use the same colored thread as the fabric, you won't be able to see anything. It is amazing. Proceed with the exact same process that you've been doing throughout the entire part of your fabric. Now I just set it on my table, my sewing table. It makes it a lot easier and faster. So if you want to go ahead and do that, um, set it down and it'll make the process a lot faster. Now you're going to end this stitch the same way that you did the other ones. Just pick up a bit of fabric and do your knot at the end. And this is the final look. You have now completed your invisible stitch. Now you've done four stitches. Now let's move on to our final stitch. The gathering stitch, my favorite. I love ruffles. So you know I'm gonna end with a cherry on top. Now this stitch is very similar to the first one we talked about. It just has a few little differences, which I will show you here. Get your thread and needle ready, but this time don't tie the tail of the thread. We're going to pull the thread through the longer piece of fabric now you're going to want to use the same method that I showed you for the running stitch. Just poke your fabric in and out, like so. Once you pull your thread through the fabric, make sure you leave a little piece of thread at the end. You're going to want to need this later. Now that you're a pro, continue stitching in the same manner. Once you've completed your strand of stitches, at the end, you're going to want to have some thread left over like you did at the beginning. Now that you have both sides of your thread, you're going to want to take your needle out and pull on one side of the thread to make some ruffles just like this. Now to finish this, you're going to want to tie by hand some knots where you choose the ruffle to end and make sure you do it two times so that the knot is really, really sturdy and do the same thing to the other side. Snip those edges and you have completed your last stitch. You are a pro, my friend. You have completed five different stitches and they are lovely. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you coming by. I hope that you learned something today in this video. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please, please subscribe. Hit that little notification button so you get notified every Wednesday. Follow me on Instagram if you have not. I would love to connect with you. And if you haven't checked out my shop, there are new items every single week that you can look at. Um, and shop if you like something or just great information on myself, what I do and why I do it. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. I don't know if you can still hear it. I hope not. Have they gone? I don't know. Mm. Thing. Something. Something. Oh.